John, the revelator, was the son of thunder, and they're one of the guys that said, we're going to call a fire down from heaven and kill them all. Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of, right? But then after a process of time, being filled with the spirit, going through life's uh, ministry, he became the great apostle of love. What a change from killing them to loving them. Amen. So I think we need to listen to his inspired writings, okay? In in verse 1, he says, My little children, huh, these things I write unto you that you sin not. Amen. Which lets us know God's children do not have to sin. It isn't God's will. All right? And if any man sins, so there's the condition and the provision, I should say, in case we get entrapped, whether it be willful or ignorance or a snare of Satan, it doesn't matter. It's all the same category, you see. This is why Christ come to the earth to take care of this for us. It's not that we can just continue to live ungodly. No, the, the, the child of God does not want to live ungodly like the world because they're different. Amen. So if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So Jesus is our advocate. And verse 2 now, and he is the propitiation. Everybody say propitiation. You can speak in tongues, can't you? For our sins. Now John's saying our, he's including himself. So our sins. Everybody say our. Now here's the kicker. And not for ours only, but the sins of the whole world. Now, just because Jesus died for the sins of the whole world does not mean they're forgiven. That's hyper grace. Get it out of your mind now. Forgiveness of sins is conditional. All right. Now, this word advocate, uh, the Greek word paraclete, parakletos, it's just, it's the comforter. He's the comforter, the paraclete, the one call alongside to help us. And I'll tell you, we need some help, but he won't fail us. Then the, the big word, perpetuation, uh, just deals with the atonement that Jesus accomplished on the cross, primarily. And that atoning work of Christ satisfied the Supreme Court of Heaven, the demands of the Godhead because of sin. Jesus satisfied that demand and stood in the gap for us. Are you glad about that? What a Savior, because none of us could measure up. And I dare say, even after salvation, we don't quite measure up. We're kind of like Jacob. You know, we walk with the limp. But nevertheless, the Lord knows these things, and uh, He sent assigned the Holy Spirit to help us live the life of a Christian. We can't live it without the Spirit of God. Not possible. But that's why... We've received him to help us. Now, the question come to my mind this week, are we all children of God? And most of the church in America says, yes, we're all children of God. In creation through Adam, that's so. But Adam fell. So everybody on the earth would be classified as children of Adam or children from Adam. Of course, Noah, Shem, Ham, Zapheth, right down the line. But basically, everybody on the earth is children of Adam and not children of God. Even though in the original purpose of the Lord God, we were his children, but fell. Now, so my answer to that question, are we all children of God? Um, Through Adam, yes, but... No, because an unsaved person is not a child of God. They do not have a father. Are you listening to me? Children of the Most High God have a heavenly father. And those that are not born again do not. That's a big, big difference. And so they need the Heavenly Father. 
The only way to be a child of God is to accept God's offer of salvation. Now, let's look at 1 John 3 and verse 1 to 3. Next chapter over, please, today. Now, if, you're, if you've accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord by faith, then you are a child of God. Amen. They're not classified as a child of the Satan, child of the devil. Even though in our past, uh, we were all influenced by the evil one and um, had the sinfulness of Adam. But because we're Christians, that makes us different than the world. Uh, I don't understand this doctrine going around. There's no difference. Uh, one guy on the radio I was listening to this week, uh, very well known, he was doing really good until he said to those in Ireland, well, we're all sinners. Now, now wait a minute. Why would I want to become a Christian if, we're no, if there's no difference between the way of the world and the ways of the body of Christ? And so I had to strike that out. I don't agree with him. I'll never agree with him. When the blood's applied, you're different. Now, I know we're not perfect, but we're in a different family. See, when a person gives the heart to Christ, we welcome them into the family of God. It's a supernatural birth that takes place in a person's heart. Just as simple as we can make it today. If you haven't received that, then you're not a son of God. Not yet, but it's not over yet. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. See, the Father. Everybody say, Father. Father. A child of God has the Father. Not a mistake. We should be called the sons of God. So if you're a Christian, then uh, the Father God says that we're sons and daughters of Him. Amen. Therefore, the world doesn't know us because it knew Him not. Beloved, talking to the believers, we, now we are, now are we the sons of God? So we're already sons of God. But because of the glass darkly, it does not yet appear what we should be. See, we have the Holy Spirit down payment, but the best is yet to come. But we know that when He shall appear. Now, there's the rapture. See? At the rapture, Christ appears in the air. At the second coming, He comes to the earth. Do you understand that? Nobody. Well... I'll have to teach another year on the rapture, then I'm trying to get off of that. We shall see him as he is. Now that's what it's talking about. See? The sons of God are going to see Jesus as he is. Praise God. And every man that has his hope, how many has got the hope of salvation finalized? Then Every man that has his hope in him purifies himself as he is pure. So the intentions of a, a son of God and a daughter of God is to cooperate and participate with God's plan, and we are to become more holy than we are right now. And uh, only the Holy Spirit can do that. I can't make myself more holy, but He's working on us, and... He will finish what he started. Now unto him is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. That's what the scripture says. He that's begun a good work will complete it till the day of Christ. That's what the scripture says. Amen. Now you're gonna have to work to get out of that, and who who wants to? You're gonna have to be insane, right? So let's look at 1 John chapter 5 now, the same book. I tell you, John had a tremendous revelation. Let's look at verse 1, chapter 5. Whosoever believes that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is born of God. All right, how many believes that? Let me read it again. Whosoever. See, it's conditional, but you, you've got to be one of the whosoever or it doesn't apply. See? 
But because of the grace of God and we've heard the gospel, then we are one of those who surrender. See? Believes that Jesus is the Christ, or the anointed one, is born of God. And everyone that loves him, that beget, loved him also, that is begotten to him. So, in layman's terms, the Father God beget you and me. It's a spiritual begetting. (laughs) The womb is your heart. And God sent the living word, sperma, into your heart's womb. It did produce fruit. That's the reason after the implantation, oh, I, I want to be uh, uh, not uh, crude here. But you received the sperma of God's Word, and that's the reason you got so mean and so ornery, because it took about nine months or further for you to be birthed into the kingdom of God. Just like a woman in the natural. They really get cranky, I'm told, along about eighth and ninth month of the gestation period. Isn't that right? It isn't? You little angels. Okay. Yeah, you ate ice cream and dill pickles, didn't you? Huh? Look at verse 18 now. We know that whosoever is born of God sins not. Uh Uh-oh. See, all this hyper-faith, hyper-grace nonsense, I throw it out. It is not God's will for us to ever sin again. Now, I know we will, but we've got to advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and through His atonement, we can receive forgiveness every single time we mess up. But that's no excuse to live that way. See? It's sloppy agape. The Lord's not pleased. And furthermore, when we know the Word of God and, and uh, been filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, we're more accountable to the will of God than those who do not know. If you've got a Bible, God's going to judge us from the book of life, and that's it. By the way, there's an emblem in the New King James cover that is uh, not godly. Moving right along. James 1.18 now. How do you know this stuff? I have my ways. You can accept or reject. It's on you. Once I deliver the mail, now you got to make a decision. You got a new King James. I bet you go home and check it out. James 1.18. Now, I said a while ago, everybody, that we are not a mistake of the Godhead. The Lord has no grandchildren and no illegitimate children, period. The Bible says very plain, of his own will beget he us. So if you're saved, the Father chose to beget you and me. How did he do it? With the word of truth. Everybody say it, the word of truth. So the truth must be heard from a spoken from a a verbalization from an anointed believer. And then something happens. The flesh can't stop it from happening, but it does happen. It goes right to the heart of the person that needs to be saved, bypasses the flesh. They don't know what's going on, but a change begins to work in their life. This is how we got saved. We heard the good news somewhere from someone that knew the word of truth. That's one thing to talk about it, another thing to know about it, see. Once you know that you know that you know, now you can plant the seed, see. 
and the Holy Spirit brings the harvest. Praise God. So, of his own will beget he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Amen. So, this refers to the scripture, the word of truth. Everybody see that? So, it's reference to the Holy Scripture, and we should refer to the Bible as the Holy Bible. The Holy Scripture are scriptures, see? So, God works to the scriptures. Amen. The scriptures are anointed and inspired of God. In 2 Timothy 2.15, now look at this now. Study to show yourself thyself approved to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Look at this now. Rather dividing the word of truth. That's it right there. So it takes time to understand how to rather divide the word of truth and bring it into the effectiveness of the anointing. If we get scriptures out of text, then we short circuit what God wants to do for people. So it's a serious thing, but it, it's a wonderful thing to be able to rightly divide the word. And I must say, we can all learn how to do it a little bit better than what we've done. Right. Amen. Because people, their eternity is on the balance here. See, that's the reason it's a fearful thing to dare to speak for God. Uh, the, the safest way is the Scripture. See, the Holy Spirit will teach you. We're not the teacher. He is. He'll take what is said, the Scripture primarily, and bring it to your heart and increase your faith, bring about new births, bring about sanctification, bring about more anointing, bring about healing, blessing, and all manner of things that Jesus bought and paid for. All comes when we hear the truth. Amen. So we must hear and this is God's way. Colossians 1.5 now, please, if you can find it. It never gets old hearing the truth because it sustains our walk with God. Very important. We might feel like it's not doing anything. Oh, His Word will not return void now. Amen. It'll accomplish what He sends it to do. How does He send it? You're hearing some of it now. See? Colossians 1.5 for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you have heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Yeah. Are you catching the little nuggets? So the word of truth is primarily the gospel. And the gospel is good news. But listen, it isn't good news until people hear it. How can it be good news if you haven't heard the word of truth, the gospel. It's good news, but until it's heard, there will be no begetting. This is the burden of the church. And I dare say, we're not going to be able to evangelize the world, not individually. If the church as a whole would just get it together and finish the assignment, Jesus might come a little sooner. At the rate that we're going, we're not going to be able to evangelize Zambia and Kenya. Twenty years and they're working, and they're just now getting the church building completed. Headquarters. And I must admit, I'm quite frustrated. But I'll get over it. I don't have another 20 years. What we're going to do, we better hurry up and get it done. So I need to see some cooperation and participation from you that are overseas. God's going to bring us to judgment now. And we need to step this thing up and quit making excuses. God provides who He calls. He'll provide. He'll make a way where there is no way. We are not provider. God Almighty is. And if you Africans... Lean too much more heavy on me as provider, I'm going to stop. God's the provider. I just have to tell it like it is, and that's the way it is. That's a spiritual father. You, you claim he's a spiritual father, and I'm cracking the whip. 
All right. Can I be nice now? Now you know what's bothering me. There's a lot of things that bother me. Amen. Ephesians 1.13 now. But you know, back to the good news. The good news is good news. I mean, if people are in poverty, when the good news comes through a process of time of operating the kingdom principles of sowing and reaping, you will come out of your poverty. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be a millionaire, but I'm saying you'd be way better off than you were before you heard the good news. Praise God. But I'm concerned the good news has been perverted for filthy lucre's sake, and that's sinful, and God's going to judge. Ephesians 1.13. Now, here's a progression that we need to look at. It's a progression upward, in whom you also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth. The word of truth. Everybody say it with me, please. The word of truth. So they had to hear the word of truth. How should they hear without a preacher? They won't. They won't. Let me stop there and share a vision I had back in 2003. <laughs> God help me. Everybody say a vision. I had this vision of being in a foreign land. I didn't know where it was. On a hillside, it was hot. Uh, the Lord is with me, believe it or not, in this vision. And I began to watch people coming, and they were dressed in these clothes, African clothes. I recognize the colors now. I didn't, in those days, I did not know. I mean, uh, they were green and red and orange and all this stuff, you know. They're coming together, and one of them had a piece of paper, and one of them, they were just so happy. And they were coming to, on the hillside there, and they were just gathering together. And then I walked into this, I thought it was a teepee, but actually it was a hut, grass hut. There was this child there, laying there, and I heard the fly land on the child's cheek, and the, just strange, strange vision. Come back out, and I asked the Lord, what are these people doing? He said, oh, they're getting ready to have church. And I asked, well, where's the preacher? And he said, they don't have one. And that's when God began to deal with me back in 2003 about this. You see, we're either called to go or we're called to support, and that's it, period. There's no onlookers, no sidelines like football. And so it continues. Change is not easy. I'm making some changes in the way that we're operating. Amen. I expect change to come when people receive the Word of God. If they were sincere, Holy Spirit's faithful, He would bring about change. Change is not easy. It's difficult, see, but necessary. So back to the verse now in Ephesians 1.13, In whom also you trusted, after that you heard the Word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. There it is. In whom also that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. There it is. There's a sequence of events that takes place in a moment of time, or it could be over a period of time. However it is, God knows, and we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's good news. So we heard, see, your Bible, the Scripture is called the Logos, Logos in the Greek, Logos. But when God's Word is spoken with uh, an anointing, it, it has the potential to become a Rima word to you and not Logos. There's a difference. The Logos word becomes a living reality. That's a Rima. And that's the reason uh, in, in Matthew 4.4, 4, uh, we have a, a, a nugget here that Jesus gave us. Of course, it's important, very important. So the Rima word, not the written word, becomes a living reality, but God works through the Scripture, which is the Logos, the written word. See? 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but what? By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's the rima. It becomes a rima. Now, sometimes God can speak direct, but it still lines up with the Scripture. Then the light bulb kicks on. That's the rima. Otherwise, dead letter kills. See? So the Holy Spirit is very much involved in this process. So then, what is the word of truth? Well, we, we see from the Scripture that it's the gospel, the good news. Uh, it's a knowing that you've been begotten of, from the Heavenly Father. He begat you and me with the Word. And when the Word was sown, it became a rima, and it brought forth a new birth. So it is with everything that God does. It's all the same. Just different stages in progression of sanctification. John 18, 38. So what is the word of truth? Well, that's a big question, and we can't answer it in just 30 minutes. I don't know if anyone can answer it truthfully, totally. Pilate asked this question in verse 38 of John 18. Pilate said to him, what is truth? That's a good question. That's a great question. Now, today, people, well, what's the facts? The facts may not be the truth. See? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no, in him no fault at all. Well, that was true, but he asked the question to Jesus, what is truth? And all the time, he had the truth standing in front of him. It's a, it's, it's a terrible thing to have the truth presented to you and you don't catch it. So we need to hone our senses a little bit and pick up on the living reality of God's Word, bring it home, and let it change us. Because the Word of God is the only thing going to change us. The only thing. Amen. So what is this truth? Well, it's the light which shines in a dark place. We could start there. We're all the children of wrath and in darkness, that's a lost person. See? Can't see. That old song, I was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. See? I was blind, but now I see. They got that out of St. John when the guy was healed. And the religious said, said asked him, well, who healed you? He said, I don't know. I just know I was blind, and now I see. The Lord could sure upset the, cat, the apple cart with the Pharisees, couldn't he? So the, the truth of the gospel is the light that shines in dark places. It is the life-giving stream in a parched wilderness. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.9, 19. Praise God. So somehow or another, God planned for the light to shine on you. Praise God. The light shined on you some way. I even think, you, you've watched the, the Ten Commandments when Moses, the, the old classic, you know, everybody's watched that, kind of like Alice in Wonderland, but we watched the Moses. And, and, uh, but there was some truth in that old movie. Now, there was... Three million plus Jews getting over the Red Sea, so that's not quite accurate, you know. But the thoughts there. And it seems to me that God can take a movie that's even in the world with a little gospel truth in it, and somehow or another, that truth permeates your soul. Even when you're watching them kill 500 people in the first 10 minutes. It has a way of getting into people, and they start thinking about it. And then on down the road, that seed of God's Word begins to work on them. <laughs> and then you start thinking, man, I think I need God. Yeah. How many ever thought that? Yeah. I have. I still do. I think I need God. And I remember driving down the road years ago. I told my wife, you know, I think I'm going to go to church. Didn't know where to go. Didn't know anybody. No Christians in my family. But God was drawing me. 
to that word. He was getting ready to give a birth for me. Do we understand we've been birthed into the kingdom of God? Can you get a hold of that? We're not of the world anymore. Praise God. The world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever, Peter said. Praise God. And I told her, I'm going to church. So we stumbled into the little Baptist church. I almost went to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because I liked that name. I didn't know who they were. Been a big mistake that I went in there. But we made the long, lonely walk. Down the altar. People were crying in that church. Have we lost the reality of salvation when somebody gives their heart to the Lord? You know, there's rejoicing in, among the angels in heaven when one sinner repents, repents. One. Now, who's rejoicing? Well, the angels don't know what salvation is. We know that God has rejoicing. The Father's happy. Jesus is overwhelmed because some, another sinner came home and received him. But the saints are there. The saints are the one. I tell you, mom and grandma and mother-in-law and mom and dad, if they've gone on and they made it to heaven, they're nagging the Lord. Remember about the kids now, Lord. Remember about the grandkids. Then one of them gets saved. They rejoice and run the streets of glory. Stop off on Glory Avenue for a while. They go on down to Shondai Shondai Street. For a while. <laughs> Folks, heaven is so real. This isn't real. It's just a temporary thing. We're going to an eternal place. Praise God. You talk about good news. My goodness. Talk about good news. Woo, boy. Heaven's gate is open wide. I'm going down to the river to be buried alive. I'm going to show my heavenly father, the man I used to be, finally died. <laughs> That's water baptism. Glory to God. And now we're walking out in newness of life. And heaven's gate is open wide. And Jesus is getting ready to call us home. Amen. Folks, it must be so because the word of God says. Right. Praise God. Amen. He's getting ready to come. How can I stay off the rapture? Well, I can't. It's a good news. Amen. It's not very edifying People tell me, well, no, you've got to get your head cut off and take the mark to be saved. That's not very edifying to me. First Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18 says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Praise God. So when the light shines, you know, you're, you're the light of the world. When Jesus left, he said, now you're the light of the world. Don't hide your light under a bushel. Amen. Let your light shine. We need to change that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let's change it, this, this huge light of mine. Most of the church, this little flickering thing about to go out. No, it's not going out. Praise God. It's going to get bigger and bigger. I'm going to walk in a brighter day. A brighter day. Because Jesus is going to make himself real to those that he's begotten. You know, Jesus is our big brother. You know, I could preach today, but the, the football game, the football game. Jesus is our big brother. And you mess with his church, you're going to get in a heap of trouble. Because <laughs> he has all authority and all power in heaven and in earth and beneath the earth. Praise God. What he says is the final authority. Now, here's the deal. The Godhead cannot change the Scripture. Or he would be lying to the saints. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. God cannot die. So there's a few things that God cannot do. We can take it to the bank. Let me sidetrack just a minute. We're about through the day. When Jesus was on the cross, he was God. He didn't cease to be God. I might be on it tonight. We'll see. But he being God possessed an infinite number of timelines. 
the eternal, he had the fullness of the Godhead and bodily form in his own being. And so this makes salvation personal. Because he being God has provided already for every human that will ever exist an eternal timeline individually. I came into one of them. Glory to God. I said, I come in. <laughs> I accepted mine. Why not? He's already given it. Why not accept it? And so did you. When we come into covenant, Jesus gave us one of his eternal timelines that will never stop. It's called eternal life. It only comes from Christ alone. Praise God. Here's the deal. He's already provided for the heathen. He's provided. He's, he's the substitute for the whole world and all the sins. Doesn't matter. The blood's more powerful. Praise God. And when that sinner accepts Christ, guess what? That timeline is activated forever. Glory to God. But if that sinner says no, Jesus is grieved because he provided and they turned him down. Folks, it's so serious. I can't make it serious enough. I tell you, God loves us enough to provide everything. When you come into covenant with God, it's all planned out. Everything. We make mistakes, but God's faithful. If he started us in the straight and narrow, he's big enough to finish it. Turn to neighbor and say, we got it made today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, if you haven't accepted God's offer of eternal life, you're missing out. I'm still understanding what happened to me almost five decades ago. But I'm telling you, it, like they said in, in Arkansas, it's getting gooder and gooder. <laughs> it's getting gooder and gooder. God's taking care of us, everybody. I know we have issues. I know we have to go to the doctor to get maintenance sometimes. It's life. There's a new day coming. Glory to God. First, Second Peter 1, 19, have you made it there yet? Got sidetracked, didn't I? We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Word, word. Whereunto you do well that you take heed, I should guess, as unto a light that shines in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Glory to God. Well, what's it talking about? The day star is a description of Jesus. Praise God. You know, it still is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The greater one lives in you and me. I said the greater one. The greater one cannot be defeated. Glory to God. You talk about a glorious church out of spot or wrinkle. This is the way. <laughs> God is going to bring it to completion. We might as well cooperate. We might as well become an overcomer. Right. Stay out of the lukewarm mess. Praise God. All it takes is a little bit of desire and obedience. That's all. The day star. Man. Perhaps the word of truth is about the same as the word of faith. I want to say it again. Perhaps the word of truth I'm talking about is about the same thing as the word of faith. Amen. And the word of faith involves the gospel, the word of truth. That's really what it is. How to operate in the word of faith is part two. So you have to walk in truth to operate in the word of faith. John said that he rejoiced that his children walked in truth, which is walking in the word of faith, which is walking in the word of truth, which is evidence you are begotten of God. You know, it's a better teaching what amens I'm getting. You're the begotten of God, are you not? 
You're either going to walk in the truth or you're not. But I suggest we cooperate with the will of God. He doesn't give up easy on us. I know there are times we'd like to throw in the towel. I can't. It could be that when Christ is on the cross, perhaps he could have called thousands of angels to destroy the world and take him down. Perhaps he could have, but he didn't. Because it was the Father's will for him to go all the way. How can we not run the race 110% and call ourselves a Christian? We must run the race 110% to receive the crown. Glory to God. There's no stopping, no quitting, no going back, even though I'd like to sometimes. So I just tell it like it is. There are times I like to throw in the towel and just quit. But what do I quit to do? Where do I go that has the words of eternal life? One time Jesus preached and they all left. He turned to the Peter and said, are you going to leave too? And Peter said, you're the one with the words of eternal life. There it is. <laughs> and even though Peter wept bitterly, he denied the Lord three times. After Christ arose, he said, go and tell my disciples and, and tell Peter. <laughs> Tell Peter, I'm back. I'm back. Glory to God. That devil got up. He, he got scared then. I'm, it's over. You know, because we've been begotten of God. Oh, do you know we're not in the family of the devil? We are not in the family of the devil anymore. The devil is not our Lord. We don't take orders from him. Our orders come down from the chief shepherd. The Lord Jesus himself, he gave me the eternal life, and nobody can take it away from me. Same way with you. Praise God. Quit acting like you're going to lose your salvation because you mess up. You won't. I said you won't. Now, if you persist over a period of time and God's the judge, you could lose out with God, but we're not going to do that because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need to fear the Lord a little bit. But we need to love God more. Amen. Romans 10, 8 is the last verse today. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you Africans got soccer, so there, okay? So. <laughs> Romans 10, 8. So in depth the scripture but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in your mouth Woo. and in your heart that is the word of truth which we preach there it is if you're going to listen to the preacher listen to the one that's preaching the word of truth amen forget about the ten steps that go nowhere just one giant leap to the arms of the Savior. That's what it is. Amen. So, the word of faith is what we are to preach. And the word of faith sustains the faith that God gives us because it's a living reality. The word of God should never be born to you there's always something we can get, a little nugget here and there. You know, if we could all just retain one thing every Sunday, please. Just one little thing. In a matter of a few months, you'd be one preaching machine. Somebody comes up to you and asks you a question, you'd say, well, the Scripture says this. See, that's witnessing. Not how bad you were before the cross. Not with all the sinning you did. No, don't bring that up. It's, it's wrong to do that. There are exceptions. But for the most part, don't never mull over the darkness in your life. It's gone under the blood, gone. The light has destroyed it. Praise God. That light of the gospel destroyed it. What darkness? Praise God. It's only in your 
mind that's not renewed totally yet. What darkness? What sin? Well, you're acting like you had all your sins forgiven. Now you're getting it. <laughs> Where did it go? See your forgetfulness. And God says he will remember them no more. <laughs> so why should I drag him around? Why should I talk about how bad it was? Now, when you talk about how good God is, what's happening, what's going on, we need to get with the program. Praise God. We've been begotten of God, and that's a done deal right there. And God jealous, he's not going to let us go. Let's stand up. I said God is not going to let us go. Praise God. Why? He didn't make a mistake. Oh, God. He has never made a mistake. If God's called you into specific work, he didn't make a mistake. That's what Moses said. God, you made a mistake. I can't even talk. What happened to his education in Egypt for 40 years? <laughs> I can't talk. Now the Lord says, now nah, I'm going to get somewhere with this guy. I'll do the talking. I'll use his brother. Praise God. You know, we need somebody to help in the ministry. Who was the guy that held up the hands of Moses when Israel began to lose the battle? So God provides others here in the church to kind of hold up because I tell you, it gets kind of heavy sometimes in God's feet. Praise God. Confess this with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you today that I'm redeemed. My name's in the book. I've been begotten by the word of truth. Thank you, Father God, for eternal life that I have received. I have it now through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. That is true confession. That's true. Glory to God. That's true. Glory to God. And that's the reason we can look at each one today and call you brother and sister. Because God is our Father. <laughs> Praise God. And Jesus is our big brother. Hallelujah.